Hello, this is Larry Tentarelli. I'm a full-time trader and the editor and publisher of the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report with a brief educational blog and video. We're going to take a look today at an open position that I've got in the S&P Energy ETF XOP, which is currently plus 91% from my original buy. And also I've added a few buys along the way and we're gonna go through my trade management here what I saw the first time I took the position and what's caused me to add to this position on the way up. So we're gonna cover a few key concepts as far as trend following and position management go. Before we get started, we'll touch base on the disclaimer, just that says everything in the video is for informational purposes only, and it's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. So we'll take a look at the chart and I've got a bigger chart that we'll take a look at in a few seconds, but we're gonna take a look at Buy point number one was in November, buy number two in December, and then buy number three was just recently in May. So we'll take a walk through first and we'll see how this started. So on November 14th of last year, I posted on the members premium Twitter page that XOP had its first close over the 40 week moving average since October of 2018. So it was only by a penny, but it was still the signal was over. And then I spoke about the correlation between treasury yields and XOP. So we'll see this is November 14th. And here is the link. And that will take us right here on the Twitter page. So we can see I posted this November 14th. It was actually a Saturday night. And we'll take a look at the chart. And here's the XOP chart. Uh, from the close the day before. And we can see that it closed at 48.86, literally one penny over the 40 week moving average, but, but over is over. And I also posted at the same time uh, a chart of 10 year treasury yields. And at the time they were at 89 basis points. They closed yesterday at 156. And, and my comment here was that there was a strong correlation between the two, possibly tied to economic expectations. So if we take a look on the chart, we'll see. So buy number one, I made it that uh, Monday. So if we take a look down, we'll see also on November 17th, I made XOP the chart of the day for members. This is something that I post every morning with our best idea for the day. And then here was my first buy. So November 17th, right after the open, so I opened a long position in XOP at 50.24 with a stop at 42.19. So if we take a look at the chart, we'll see November 17th, 50.24 and my stop 42.19. So the stop is the red line. So right after I took the position, it started to work pretty much right away. So within, the, so this 200 day moving average signal is the same as the 40 week for the most part, but the 200 day moving average signal. Uh, looks like it brought in some buyers. So it went from 50 up to almost 60. That's about an 18% move in one, two, three, four, in five days. Now, a lot of traders based on timeframes might've been tempted to sell this position here. It did have a drawdown along the way, but then it continued to work higher. And on this pullback, I added to my position, a little bit of a drawdown, but we can see the position started to work Along the way, I dialed some back and then I've ridden with it. So we're gonna take a look. There's been some drawdowns in this position that I've held through. So if we take a look, we're gonna see drawdowns since my buy point. So in November, after I took the position, there was an 11% drawdown. In December, 12%, January, 11%, February, March, April, May. So you can take a look at this chart and you can see that pretty much every month, there's been about a 10% drawdown or more. Uh, here's another one. Here's a pretty sharp drawdown, nice recovery, bigger drawdown, recent drawdown. So all along the way that I've been in this position, there's been drawdowns. So what happens is anytime that there's this type of volatility, traders often get uh, tempted to either sell out of their position or they get shaken out because they think that that's the end of the move. But, but I've held with this position for quite a while. So we can see just by taking a look at it and we'll go back to the top for a second. Since the first buy, I'm up 91%. 
add-on buy in December is up 60%. And then another add-on buy May 7th is up just under 12%. So what we do is I, I track everything. We track it on the member's website. So this is an, an edited version of the spreadsheet that the members see, but the members have access to this uh, 24 seven on the website. So we can see first buy, second buy, third buy. And, and the key thing here, I, I think to, you know, really to emphasize is the, the signal was very simple. It was the close over the 40 week moving average. In this case, the 200 day moving average, which is what got me into the position. So XOP, we can see from 70 to 38 was in, was in a pretty sharp and a pretty steep drawdown. And I remember when I, when I took this position, there was a lot of questions on it, but I used the 200 day moving average extensively. And when I get a signal, I'm just gonna take the position, set my stop, and then let the signal go to work. What I do know is if I get stopped out, I know exactly where my risk is. And I know that the upside can be many more multiples of where the risk is. Now I did scale some back in the end of February. Once tech stocks start to get a little more volatile and I had a few stops go off, what I did was I dialed back about 20% of the position. But XOP right now is my biggest position. And you can see, obviously it's had a pretty big move, but I've continued to add along the way. And one of the, one of the, the biggest uh, benefits I think of trend following is instead of cutting these positions short, what I want to do is I want to add on the way up when they continue to work. So we'll take a look at another chart. This was May 7th, which was my third ad. And I posted this on the members Twitter page as well. So if we take a look, this link right here would take us to this post and it shows I added to my XOP position again at 86.10. We can see here's a weekly chart. So my first buy was down here second buy was up here and once again based on the on the weekly chart i had a few signals that told me it's time to once again add more to this position and we can see it, it's continued higher but it's had some volatility along the way so we can see just by taking a look buy point number one with the stop buy point number two dialed some back in case the market started to get uh shaken out i want to book some along the way but then buy point number three. So this has been a, a very strong position so far. And then we'll take a look down. We can see there's been a lot of drawdowns. Other highlights with this position. So I've had it on our members best ideas list a few times on May 5th. I highlighted it again for members at 82. Right now it's at 96 and change. It was on our best ideas list March 26th. On November 29th, it was the free chart of the week. So I send out a, a chart of the week best idea uh, for free. And we've got quite a few thousand people that are on that list. It's up 66% from that idea. And it's been on our weekly ETF best ideas list, 25 of 28 weeks since November 23rd. So there's a few key takeaways from a, a longer term perspective and from a trend following perspective. And this I think is the real educational point. Is first thing, I've got eight key, uh, number eight keynotes so number one, I want to take the signals. So when I got the 200-day moving average reclaim, I didn't, I didn't go through a lot of gyrations about, you know, 50 different signals and, and 50 different indicators. The price closed over the 200-day moving average, and that told me that's my buy. Now, the second thing is I chose XOP over XLE. XOP is up 64% year-to-date. XLE is up 47% year-to-date because I've, I've been doing this for a while and I studied the composition of these two ETFs. And I knew that if, if the sector was going to work, that XOP should outperform XLE. And that's why that's been my focus. Number three, wanna learn how to maximize winners. So adding to winners on the way up is a key way to maximize. Once we get into a big trade, adding on the way up is a way to really maximize the gain. I don't want to be scared to give some money back. So we can see with all of these, if I was going to let volatility shake me out, there's been about a 10% drawdown every single month. I could have gotten shaken out any single time along the way, but that, that wasn't what the trading plan was. I want to adhere to my stops, which is what I did. So I don't get shaken out early. 
I don't want to overreact or overtrade. And the key thing is embrace volatility. So volatility is not bad. And in order to get into positions that can go up 90% in a, in a six or seven month period, there's going to be some volatility along the way. There, there's really no free lunch and there's not so much, there's not too much of a, you know, they go straight up, but they don't correct, you know, positions that can go up 20% in a week, they're going to correct and correct pretty sharply along the way. So what I want to do is not get shaken out too early. I want to stay consistent. I don't want to let the news, social media opinions or, or what's happening in the S&P 500 shake me out of the position. Big time frames equal bigger winners. Uh, and I don't want to settle the way that I trade. I've got a, an intermediate to a longer term time frame. So I'm looking for positions that in, in three to six months can go 25 to 50% and six to 12 months can go that I believe can go 50 to 100%. So I'm not looking for, you know, five and 10% wins. I'm looking for 50, 100% gains. Plus I've had quite a few just recently. So I, I don't want to take these small wins, uh, you know, along the way when there's bigger gains to be had. So a couple of things you can, if you're interested in more information, if you go onto the website, bluechipdaily.com, you can see best trades. It'll go through some of our better top-down calls over the past two years or so. Top closed positions, top current open positions. This is as of May 25th. Also, we're accepting new members if you go to the Join Now tab on the site. So we've got Join Now, and then it'll walk you through and show you daily updates and also the weekly updates. So that's it for today's video. I just wanted to spend some time and really walk through the signal, the trade management, why I've added along the way up and what I saw on the charts and uh, hopefully add a little bit of value. So I appreciate everyone's time and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.